Okay, so let's go through this. So you note that everything is still the same with the IP, it doesn't change, and the memory allocation is still two gigs. I'm still using two CPU cores, and the provider we chose is VirtualBox. So notable difference here is that in Windows, we have to give the full path to the SSH and um, the key pairs. And in this case, I used a different algorithm here. I used the Edwards Curve 25519 algorithm, and this is the public key, and this is the private key. Once again, you have to give the full path for these things. If you are not sure what an SSH key is or how to install that, also please check out the video on setting up SSH keys and installing SSH keys in Windows. So the next thing that was done here was the folders. So what I did was um, just used my root directory and I created a directory called code. So in this directory, this is where I'm gonna place uh, majority of my Laravel projects or my Laravel projects for that matter. Um, you'll have to give a full path once again. And what's interesting to note is that this path on your local machine will map to the vagrant um, path with the same you know, directory. So whatever you create in here will also end up in here, okay? Uh, and vice versa. So the other thing that was interesting is um, you can provide what's called um, native file systems. So you could add an additional flag here to the folders directory. So right after this, you could type um, the actual type, which is here, and you could choose NFS as the native file system. Well, Windows um, doesn't support NFS like right out of the box. So you'll have to do um, a little bit of, um, I guess, kind of tinkering around with this. So if you're using, um, you know, Mac or something like that, the native file system it, it's, it's built in and it comes uh, ready to go. But there is a uh, plugin, I believe. Let me just double check here. We're going to open up um, Edge and we're going to just jump to the documentation just to check this out. So inside of Vagrant, you'll see that um, in order to support the native file system, um, you have to do a little bit of magic, I guess, on Windows. So the folders don't work on your Windows host, so Vagrant will ignore these requests and the NFS uh, will not be synced to those folders. So I believe they had provided, if you wanna check this out guys on your own time, um, there is a GitHub repo uh, that is maintained by a few individuals. And this repo right here allows you to uh, install and set up native file system with Windows. So if you're running this command right here, this will install the plugin. And then later on down here, you'll have to do an additional a bunch of settings to actually uh, configure Vagrant to run the native file system. Uh, it's actually worth it if you want to go through this. It's a little bit faster and on first boot you won't initially realize it, but here on after the Vagrant box will move very quickly. I won't walk you through this process, but note that you guys can check that out at your leisure. It's a little bit of an advanced uh, configuration, so if you're new, um, just keep it simple for now and we'll just, you know, remove this flag. Okay, so the next thing I did down here was the sites. So this is where we configure a domain uh, via Nginx or was something that you type into your uh, browser using this URL. In this case, I chose the URL to be blog.code and for the second project, I chose the URL to be laravel.code. So for this to work, you have to actually um, place the IP address, the IP provided by the virtual box inside of a Windows host file. So I went ahead and I did that. And all I did here was I used the Visual Studio's code alias and I followed this full path here, which is Windows System32 drivers, ETC, and it brings you to host. So I'll rerun this and what it will do, it'll bring you to the host file. And at the very bottom, you're gonna append the host file with the IP and the domain name that you chose for each project. So this should correlate with the actual um, IP here and the actual map of the domain name that you chose. So if you have multiple projects, you'll have to go back in here and add a different domain name for each project. You may get some administrative privileges issues because you're gonna have to be an admin to change or modify this file. So do note that you'll have to do that. And um, another thing that you can do, I think as a virtual box and homestead, version six, you can add another flag here to the sites area. 
so you can have multiple versions of PHP. Let's say, for instance, you wanted one project, say the blog.code project, to use PHP uh, version like 8.1, then you would do so by d typing in PHP and then the version that you're looking to use. And then perhaps on this project down here, you wanted to use PHP and perhaps, I don't know, 7.4 or something like that. So you can add additional um, options to the sites to uh, run different versions of PHP inside of Homestead, and then you can switch out those versions depending on your project. But for now, I'm going to keep it fairly simple, and we're just going to keep it kind of as is to whatever we had. So I just reverted those changes and then brought them back to what we originally had. Um, down here, we have the databases. After that, um, you could add or you know choose a database name. In this case, I believe it's Homestead. Uh, the username is Homestead, and the password is secret. And in the features section, you can add uh, different features. And Homestead comes with a slew of features and options that you guys can add. You can check that out, uh, the documentation. Um, so for now, we've installed MySQL or we've enabled MySQL. You could switch this to something else like MiraDB or Postgres or whatever you'd like or, or add additional features. But just for simplicity and for keeping this video fairly brief, we're going to just keep everything at its default. So none of the ports were changed. Everything is as is. The only things that were modified were the keys and I changed the folder, like I created a new directory called code. And down here, I made sure it mapped to the sites and we added the domain names. And then we went to the host files and we added the correlating domain names with the IP to match these sites over here for the Nginx profile. All right, so I just noticed that I forgot one thing. So inside of these sites directories here, or these the site area, I forgot to actually put the folder of the project that I'm going to create. So in this case, this one's gonna be blog, and in this case, this one's gonna be Laravel. Uh, within that code directory, you're gonna have a new project, and this one's gonna be called Laravel, and within this code directory, uh, the same thing mapped to the uh, virtual box. Uh, we're going to have another, you know, Laravel project, and this one's going to be called blog. So uh, sorry about that, guys. I forgot to add that in there. So let's just jump back here. I cleared the previous commands, and I'm just going to run uh, the vagrant up command to get our vagrant box up and running. <laughs> 